Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're doing a going out while going gluten-free. I don't know why I would say going gluten-free, like you're gluten-free for the rest of your life, but it's just a play on words. So, <laughs> a little life update. I had my Instagram hacked this past week, um, not really wanting to talk about it anymore, but I have a new Instagram account, which is now No Gluten Gabby, and I just took that as a chance to just change everything. I wanted to have my name and my username for a while. Like, I didn't think I'd be where I am today. So this username was just like a fun thing I put. So now that's gone, even though my website will still be the same. But either way, I am now No Gluten Gabby. So you can just, now people know my name and it's not emails. I get so many emails and a lot of time they'll use my username because they don't know my name, even though it's in like my bio and stuff. But they'll be like, hey, No Gluten Guru. And I'm like, Ugh just wish they would say Gabby. So this is this is a blessing in disguise, but let's get into today's topic, which is again, going out while going gluten-free. Being in your 20s and getting diagnosed with celiac, I mean, getting diagnosed with celiac, no matter what age, is not a fun time, but getting diagnosed in your 20s, it's hard, I won't lie. Like, it's just because you're, you're trying to figure out yourself too as an adult, and then now you have a whole diet change, a whole lifestyle change. Like me personally, I'm a super shy person when it comes to like, I don't want people going out of their way to like do anything for me, you know what I mean? So that was like a hurdle definitely when I first got diagnosed is like, I have to speak up for myself. And that was like the hardest thing to like jump over is realizing you have to be your own health advocate and like actually speak up. Like it's not just one conversation. You're like, hey, I have celiac disease, so I have to be gluten free. It's like for your partners, for your family, for your friends, you have to say to them like, hey, I need to be gluten free, but to this extent, like this is what's happening to me. These are the symptoms that I get. Can we just like, Let's, let's make a system to make sure I don't get sick. So like updating them as you learn, because when you first get into this diet, I mean, at least for me, I didn't know a thing. Like I just thought like the food on my plate had to be gluten-free. So I'm like, okay, I'll just do that. And then as I learned, like I didn't really understand the entire diet until like a year into it, like understanding cross-contamination, understanding like the different utensils you have to use, understanding how sensitive I was because celiac disease shows differently in everybody. And that's another thing you should consider when hearing about celiac disease, when dealing with celiac disease is everybody shows it differently. So the person, like my sister has celiac disease, but we don't have the same symptoms. We don't have the same sensitivities or we just show it differently. And so that's important to note too, is like, you're not gonna be like every other celiac and every celiac is not gonna be like you. So keep that in mind when you're talking to people and when, if you don't have celiac disease and you're just hearing people, understand everybody's different. Everyone's gonna show symptoms differently. Everybody has sensitivities that are different. So just keep that in mind. As for the celiacs here, trying to explain their disease, just constantly, update as you know more or if you see something speak up it's okay like it's your health at the end of the day it's like fine that you're taking those two seconds to be like hey can you make sure you actually do this instead or can you make sure like my food is separate from everybody else whatever it may be those extra five seconds are gonna save you like a month of pain at least for me i get i get sick for like a month so it's i've noticed after speaking up about my disease more and after just educating my friends, my family, my partner, whoever it may be, educating them, that, that just like sets the boundary. It sets everything that you kind of need. It's your base because it's like once they understand, it's kind of, then you get your support system around you. And that's what's so awesome is like, I know I'm safe wherever I'm going out to eat because my friends are taking me seriously. My family's taking me seriously. Everybody's now taking me seriously because I'm taking my diet seriously and I'm speaking up. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing that's hard when you're in your 20s and you get diagnosed with celiac disease is when you're single 20s and diagnosed with celiac disease. Dating, that's already not fun. I am so happy to not be dating and to find somebody who takes my disease seriously because not a lot of people do. And that was also a hard truth to run into when I was in the dating game. So my tips for dating with celiac disease or going on your date, like have that conversation with them. If you're gonna revolve it around food, like if you're gonna go out to eat, the conversation needs to be had before going out to the restaurant is like, hey, I have celiac, which means like I have to be gluten free. And like, if not, like I can be sick for up to a month. Like this is me personally. And these are the things that happen to me. So I just have to like be very careful. So if we go out to eat, can we do, give them a list of options? Like that's an idea. But having that conversation with them prior also like kind of weeds out, weeds out people. When you're like, oh yeah, I've got this. And then you just, it, it dwindles away. And it's a good thing. Cause you don't want to have people in your life that don't take your disease seriously. That's, well, rule number one is being your own health advocate. But if there was like a 1A, it would be 
don't have people in your life that don't take your disease seriously or your diet seriously. There's also so many ways to get around going out to eat or revolving a date around food. Like in the summertime, I always go on hikes or walks or we go to the beach or do like even soft serve ice cream. But if you want to have like no food related things, go to the movies, go like Turner and I once did dance lessons. We didn't actually end up doing it because it was like kind of weird. <laughs> But like we tried. <laughs> We're gonna have like a game night. There's like, like seriously, I think I went on Pinterest and like Googled like non-food date ideas and there was like lists and lists and lists. And I'll put some in my bio below just to give you guys some options. But you don't have to revolve yourself around food. Though, if you want to revolve yourself around food or like actually wanna go out to a restaurant and grab drinks or do whatever you wanna do, that's possible too. Whenever it came to going out to eat, what I would do is just give them a list of places that I can eat at in our area. And I'm like, oh, just pick one. That way it doesn't feel like you're making all the plans. Like that's one thing I always hated is like, I don't want to feel like I'm like, yeah, let's go on a date. Oh, this is where we're going to eat. This is what we're going to do. I don't want to be that person. I've never been able to like make that plan. Now I've gotten better at it because I'm like, eh, that's my way or I'm going to throw up. So it's like you decide. So you can give them the list of options and then just kind of go from there. And again, that's when you kind of explain your disease and diet and be like, these are the places that are safe and like what cross contamination is. And that conversation will help a lot because it either sets the boundary and you're good or it weeds out the weirdos. Like I just don't get people who don't think the gluten-free diet thing is a real thing, but that's that's another topic for another day. <laughs> also, if they pick a place, just look at the menu. Like if you haven't talked about your disease yet and they're like, hey, I wanna take you to this restaurant, blah, blah, blah. Look at the menu ahead of time. You can call them. Like I've done that secretly. Like, hey, like I'm coming. I just wanna see if you're celiac safe. And they're like, oh yeah, we can make sure everything's good. So. You can also have that spontaneous, just like do your research before. And if it doesn't, if it's not a restaurant that you can eat at, then just say, oh, hey, I actually have celiac disease. That's when you have the conversation. And then you're like, well, here's other food options that we can do. Is that okay? It shouldn't be as scary as it feels. And like, once you get that answer, it's like, oh, okay, now I got that over with. It's like, I'm a very just get it over with type of person, have that conversation. It's like, this is what's going on with me. It's not a big deal. We just got to do things this way so I don't get sick. And it's very understandable when you make it more like lighthearted too. Like I, I'm just not someone, I don't like to be like, Hey, so I have a lifelong disease and it's not good. It's like, you, no, you can just easily have that conversation, especially as you get into the disease more. It's not an embarrassing thing. You, it's, it's in our genes. Like we, we can't help having this disease. So we got to find ways to just tackle it instead. So just having that conversation, get it over with and you're good. And then when you're at the restaurant, you just have your server come over, takes your order, you explain your disease. And then you just say to them like, yep, so that's pretty much what it is. And th like, after I said that, then I was like, oh, that's like not that hard, but I understand how serious it is. But that's like, it's not a big deal. So my takeaway from this is be your own health advocate, speak up for yourself, set those boundaries with everybody in your life. And if they don't take your diet seriously, dump them. And I also wanted to make this video because I don't think I've ever shown you guys how I use my Nema Partner sensor out and about. So we're gonna take this guy to I don't know yet. It's only like 9.30, so I'm going out to dinner. Um, so, yeah, we'll see where we're gonna go. Yeah, after all the errands today, I just said, let's grab a Chipotle bowl and go home. We still took all the precautions necessary. They changed their gloves and all that good stuff, but I still wanted to test it just because, you know, you never know. So what you do is I just tapped all around my bowl. That's how I make sure I get everything in there because it only takes that sample size. So you want to be strategic about it. So you always just tap around. And then I also crumpled up some of the chip and I add a little bit of water because for dry stuff, you want to add water. Let it test for about two minutes. And thankfully both were gluten-free and it was a good, it was a good dinner.